All right, here's what our dough looks like after it's risen. Um, I don't believe I mentioned before that typically you let your dough rise to double. Um, there are different, like, again, there's several different recipes. I mean, hundreds of different recipes, probably thousands of different recipes on bread making. Um, they all can produce a, an excellent product, or they can all produce a crummy product. It just depends on how you know to work the um, ingredients. A lot of recipes will require you to punch your dough down and re-knead. This one does not. Um, you knead it once, then you pinch off your dough and make it the shapes of whatever you're after and then you can let that rise. With bread you typically will let it rise till it's double. When I make breadsticks or pretzels it's not necessary that it rises until double. Um, I can let it, it doesn't hurt it. It does change the pretzels. We go for a thinner pretzel because we want a crisper product. Um, so those I typically do not let rise at all. Now when you do your bread dough or your, just your dough itself, you pinch. When you pull it apart, it um, affects the yeast. So try to always pinch it. Um, then you just shape your, your dough into, this will be a bread loaf. Um, I do use lard for my pans. And then I'll set that in there and it'll rise to double and I'll put it in the oven. And just a couple quick different shapes here. Um, when you do your breadsticks, you just pinch off your piece. It looks like I just pulled it too. I got impatient. I have too much there, so I'll pinch off some more. And no, they're not, you know, picture perfect, but that is exactly what we go for in that shape for a breadstick. Um, then after they're cooked, um, I'll show you the show you what you do in the next process. So, all right, just real quick so I can show you the different techniques. When it comes to the pretzels, I just push it. Um, obviously, I'm going to do a bigger portion than this, but I don't want to take up a bunch of time with it. Um, push it so it's flat, and then I use a pizza cutter and just do that. And that's how I get my my pretzel shapes. I'm going to turn the camera off now and do it on a, a larger pan and I'll show the end product when we're dough left that I wanted to just show the shape and um, well for the big board for the pretzels um, and also shaping. Uh, I'm going to do hamburger buns instead of rolls but they you know technically the same thing as far as uh, the hamburger buns can cross over for the dinner rolls. Um, they're thinner, rounder. Uh, the dinner rolls are harder to use for sandwiches but I also wanted to discuss um, the type of cookware that I use. I've used to, when before we used the wood stove exclusively, use grit glass and uh, I always have used cast iron for years and enamelware like this pan is. But since we have only used the cook stove anymore, um, I keep it uh, down to cast iron and enamelware. I had a bad experience with glass. I know they say you can use glass in a wood oven, but uh, my experience has been a negative on that. Um, you will find with your bread that the different types of fuel will create a different type of flavor, and you won't you won't notice it unless you're exposed to the other fuels. Uh, electric is different than gas, obviously. It's the heat intensity um, is what I believe, and the way creating the way it cooks the product, which creates the flavor. Cast iron. Um, and enamel do not act as a reflector. I've used uh, some tin pans, uh, cookie sheets in the oven before, and it kind of acts as a reflector with the heat. So um, that is just my personal experience on that one. Pretzels, if you cut them thin like this, they're a crisper, crisper pretzel. And you, you know, I mean, you can do the pretzel shapes and everything. We have, <laughs> we have a very busy family. We have um, from 19 years old down to 10 months old. And with the way we live, I look for for foods that I can put on the table that 
I know are more nutritious than um, what I can pick at the grocery store and also um, more economical. So, but I also have to have um, time, I guess, involved. If it's too time consuming for me, I'm not going to enjoy doing it. And if I don't enjoy doing it, that means that I'm not going to do it. I'm one of those type of people. If, it, if it's too complicated or too time consuming, I'll find another way. Um, some people it doesn't bother, but um, it does me. So uh, the pretzel thing, that's a little bit more convenient for me. Now my dough is starting to stick because it's, it's kind of risen, maybe a little too much. So I just sprinkle a little flour on it to help make it easier to work with. Uh, again, if you can remember, pinch off your your dough and it's I mean it's just so simple to make these buns you just form them into a disc that's it um, line them all the way around you might give about a half inch to a quarter of an inch space in between them um, they will rise these you do want to rise a little bit and as they cook, if they touch, that's okay. It's uh, on the roll, <coughs> excuse me, and the bun um, side though. When your product is cooked and you take these out of the oven, and whenever I take them out of the oven, that's when I put butter on top. Uh, if you can't wait for them to cool off, and in my house it's really hard to get, get my kids and my husband not to dive right in, you don't want to try to cut your your bun or your roll or even your bread because what that does is that breaks down your um, the inside of the product and then it becomes it's like it's almost non-cooked I mean not that excessive but that's what it feels it's not light and fluffy and airy anymore so um, take a fork and just pry it apart you'll enjoy it much better um, by doing that You can cook, I mean, if you have cast iron, it doesn't matter what it is, you can cook in just about any cast iron thing. Um, I've made, I've made them on rounds, skillets. Um, I have a really large one that I do, usually we'll do a big batch of rolls in, uh, round griddles. Um, uh, I've made bread in enamelware pie pans. Um, it's a round loaf, but you know, it all cooks the same and it's all good when it comes out of the oven. So if you're doing a big batch, you don't think, well, I don't have enough bread pans or I don't have enough cookie sheets, just improvise. All right, we'll come back when this is done. Well, since we did the dough, we've gotten the breadsticks done and the pretzels, and I'm in the middle of getting ready to check the rolls. Um, the oven requires that the dough or the product does be turned. Um, the side here next to the firebox obviously gets done first. You can see how close I've got the rack to the bottom of the oven. If the rack is up any higher, the top gets done before the bottom. So in that little air pocket there, it's probably about a half inch to three quarters of an inch. It's just enough between the bottom of the oven that it cooks really even. You think, well, the bottom will get done too soon, but it doesn't. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty even cooking. The, most, the biggest problem is the side of the firebox. So here is our finished products. Our bread was the last thing that we pulled out of the oven. Um, our breadsticks have the garlic butter, or the butter, the garlic, and the parmesan already on them. Um, pulled them away, but you can see how they raise nice and fluffy, and then the bottom's just slightly browned. Uh, our pretzels look well done, but that's not really the case. We like them thin and crisp. Um, you can see the bottom is nice and brown, and you can hear they're crispy like that. Our rolls, or actually our buns, is what we were doing. They got, they were the 
the first thing in the pan and one the second to last thing that was in the oven so they raise too much they typically don't let the buns raise um, at all it creates a better product uh, for what for sandwiches but because I was doing a variety of things with this particular batch um, they just did not get put in line first the pretzels went in first because uh, those don't raise either so now I've also got enough um, dough left for one more batch of pretzels to go in. So that's quite a bit out of, well, by the time we add the extra flour, and 14 cups of flour. Um, and that's almost, it's about five pounds, round about there. So that's a lot of, a lot of food for your family for, uh, since, since I bought a five pound bag of flour, we usually buy them in the 50s, but I'm gonna guess what, about 250 at the store, maybe two, two to three, 50 to 350 for the unbleached organic. So that's it.